us from this spring that he who lives to be my king once died to be my savior that he would leave his place on high and come for sinful men to strange so once did I before I knew my Savior my Savior loves my Savior lives my Savior is always there for me my God he was my God is my God he's always gonna be my Savior loves my Savior lives my Savior is always there for me my God he was My Savior lives, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior loves, my Savior lives. My Savior lives. Good morning. We're glad that you're here this morning. I'm going to invite you to join us as we dedicate this service of worship and prayer. God is a God who is so good, and this morning we want to invite his presence to meet us where we are. And we want to ask him to take us to where he would have us to be. We join me as we pray. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of this day. It's been an amazing week for many of us in our lives. And a time of vacation, a time of celebration of our nation's 236th birthday. But it's wonderful to have opportunity to be in this place. And Lord God, we invite you to be here. And we pray that our worship today would be pleasing to you. As we gather here, we ask you to pour out the power of your spirit on this place and in our lives. And may we worship you this morning in the freedom that is designed for us as believers. Father, come and meet with us. It's in the name of your Son, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And together we say, Amen. Good morning. As I look out here, I'm kind of glad that God doesn't take uh, hot Sundays off. <laughs> Good to see those of you that are here. It's a wonderful Sunday morning. It's a bit hot, it's true. Um, I just want to say that uh, if you happen to be a guest with us this morning, we do appreciate you being here as a guest. And if you're a guest for the first time, we would like to make sure that you find out more information about the church and the way that can happen is for you just to leave your name and address with us. You can do that either by writing it in the, on the attendance pads or you can go to the, the table at the back of the room and just there's a little card back there and you can give us the name and address. We will not bug you, but we will just stop by to drop off that mug. It's going to be filled with information that tells about the many ministries and the many opportunities that exist at this church. So we hope you will take advantage of that. If uh, the attendance pads haven't been passed yet, if you are in a center aisle, there is an attendance pad on the first seat of each aisle. And if you will just take that, and if, if you have to reach over to grab it, do that, please. We like to know who's here. It helps us to figure out who's not been able to be here, and that way we can stay in touch with everyone. We'd appreciate you doing that. If you will open your bulletins to ministry opportunities and events, I'd like to cover a, a couple things with you. The first one is that we have another uh, grief recovery class that's going to be beginning uh, this Wednesday, July 11th at 10 o'clock until about 11.30, and it will go for eight weeks through August 29th. And those sessions are going to be led by Reverend Doris Schleschman, and she has done this several times now, and, and uh, so we are hoping that if you are someone or you know someone who has a uh, dealing with the loss of a loved one or just dealing with a loss that's really kind of thrown you for a loop, come to that, that meeting. At least come to the first meeting on Wednesday morning. See if it's not something that you would benefit from. Uh, there will be services at Concordia Care Center this afternoon at 3 o'clock, and there will be a service at Village House tomorrow at 10 o'clock. 
we are one of many churches that takes turns uh, providing a worship service for those two places, uh, a monthly service for those two places. So if you would like to join us this afternoon at 3 or tomorrow morning at 10, we would love to have you join us as we celebrate a worship with those folks who are not able to get out. And uh, the United Methodist Men's Monthly Dinner is going to be this Wednesday at 6.30 here in Becker Hall. We hope that the men of the group can come. There's going to be a, a great program. It will be uh, Carmen Phillips who will be sharing he and his wife's trip to China. And he's got a lot of beautiful pictures and things that uh, he can really make that, that trip come to life for you. If you'd like to make arrangements to attend and haven't done that yet, please call Stan Tag before this evening or by this evening and his number's listed in here. The United Methodist Women's Rummage Sale is going to be Saturday, August 4th. This is a very, very popular event that we have at the church. Uh, they are accepting donations from uh, anyone now. And if you will just check the, the information here in the bulletin, it'll tell you what time and where to bring things for the rummage sale and also give you an opportunity to sign up to help at the rummage sale if you'd like to do that. One last thing I'd like to tell you is that Pack a Sack Sunday is uh, coming up next Sunday, July 15th. And the Karen Share in Gravit will be receiving all of the non-perishable items that are collected here. Bring those to church with you on Sunday. They will definitely be put to good use. And I'd like to ask Pastor uh, Lee to come up and just say a few words about Vacation Bible School. You've got an insert in your bulletin? Vacation Bible School. It's coming up on July 22nd through the 26th. It's an evening vacation Bible school this year. We have a huge church here. I don't know if we realize how big our facility is. We can accommodate a lot of children. We have lots of volunteers each year. We can certainly use more. We always can use volunteers, but mostly we need children. We've got lots of children in Bella Vista. We want to invite them all. I'd ask that you take these cards and if you're too old to fill out the registration on the back, then you have got to give it to somebody who's not, okay? If that's, that's the way this works, if they want to, you can look at the registration, and you can go ahead and go to our Love, Learn, Lead website, and parents can sign up very quickly at the website. There's a link there on the home page. There's one on, our I think, our information page. There's several links, but they're easy to find. Click on those, and they can register online and, and sign up for Vacation Bible School. It's going to be a wonderful Wonderful event in the evenings of July 22nd through the 26th. This year we also have a class that we're going to have five kids that will have room for five that are special needs kids. So I wanted to ask Andrea to say, ask a little about that and for volunteers. Yes, we're really excited. This year we're going to try, um, we're starting a, a new ministry for children with special needs. And we're um, going to start with Bible school. We're going to have five spots available. Um, and we need volunteers, and these volunteers are just going to be in the room with, there's two therapists and a special ed teacher that are going to be in the room, and so you'll just be in the room with us, with the children, and um, we need probably eight to ten volunteers, and you just need to have a heart for kids and be willing to work with us, <laughs> and um, we're really excited we think it's going to be really, it's a very necessary, uh, needed ministry in the area, and so we're excited. And if you know of anyone that has a child with special needs that's preschool through elementary, if you would get them in touch with either Carrie, Drish, or I, then we can get them registered. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We're kind of short in numbers today. A little acoustic set today. If you could please stand and sing with us, and uh, the louder the better. <laughs>
The morning star is shining through, and every eye is watching you. I don't know, but my side did good singing out. You did good on my side. I don't know about this side. Did y'all do good? Did you do good? All right. Well, God is good. And all the time. We're glad you're here, and God is a God who is good. And this morning, as we continue our sermon series, we're talking about freedoms. We're talking about the freedom. Of sp- we talked about the freedom of speech last week, freedom of worship today, and the next two Sundays, we'll be talking about freedom from um, want and then freedom from fear and so here's i'm gonna give you a freedom and that is to talk you've got a freedom to talk and to greet and to make everybody feel welcome will you greet those around you in the name of the lord Is everybody, am I on, my mic on? My mic on? I was waiting. 
I was waiting. I saw you going the wrong way, and I thought, I'm not loved anymore. Y'all gather up here close. We've got a smaller group this morning. Oh, good. I like having shoes on sometimes. Come on. Anybody see any fireworks Wednesday? We didn't have many fireworks, did we? We were on a burn band. That's right. Oh, really? What were you saying down here? What are those headlights on your on your hat? You got to turn them on. I want to see that. It's like Spider Man. Spy View. That's nice. You know, there we go. I like it. Spy gear, all right. Spy gear. You know, we're all free to wear our spy gear to church if we like to. We know that. We didn't get to see many. Yeah, it comes off. You can put it on your other hat, on your Texas Rangers hat, instead of that St. Louis Cardinal hat. Oh, you got it for Christmas? Well, we didn't see many fireworks, did we, on Wednesday because of the burn ban? But was it still the 4th of July? It was still the 4th of July, and we still celebrated our country's freedom, right? Y'all know 4th of July? That's the birthday of our country. That's when we celebrate becoming a country and being free now are we free to come to church on Sundays yes we get to choose right sometimes we choose to come sometimes we choose not to y'all get to make choices around the house sometimes when mom and dad say go do this do you get to choose oh I hate to tell you but I think sometimes y'all do choose yeah I think so well you know what else I heard about that time. It was a problem, wasn't it? We have the... Oh, your mom tells me everything, Caleb. You've got to remember that. Oh, no. You know what we else I have the freedom to do? We have the freedom to use our minds. We have the freedom to think. And we have the freedom that God has given us to worship God how God has enabled us to. God has given us minds that we can read and come to worship and we can listen and we can talk to one another because we're free God has given us the freedom to choose in our country we have the freedom to choose a lot of things we have the freedom to come and worship as we choose but other places other countries children might not get able to sit at the front of a church like we're doing but all throughout the world children have the freedom that God's given them in their mind to understand God to think about God but one of the freedoms that we probably need to choose is since our country has allowed us to be free, to worship like we want to, we have to help others remember that they can think about God how they want to, that we can help others remember that they are free in their minds to understand God, that we can always listen to God with our minds and our hearts. Can y'all do that? Can y'all listen to God freely and listen for what God is telling you to do and how God is asking you to help others? If y'all can, let us pray together this morning. Y'all ready? Say, thank you, God, for setting me free. Y'all repeat after me. For giving me a mind to listen to you. Lord, help me hear your voice of freedom. Amen. All right, y'all can head to Sunday school or stay up here and worship. Somebody's got to help me up. If you would please stand and sing our first song today is Made to Worship.
As you're taking your seats this morning, I invite you to make note of the insert in your bulletin, not the VBS insert, but our celebrations, our cares, and our concerns. I have some things I'd like to add and change on there. I do want to make note of several things also that uh, we do have a service here this afternoon at 2 o'clock for Dennis Burke that passed away on July 1st. Ask for your prayers for his family and 
attendance to that service if you're able. Second, there, there's also a carnation on the uh, chancel area and the, on the uh, altar in the uh, sanctuary for Jean Jackson, Jan Jackson, who died Monday on the 25th. She's been uh, buried in her hometown in Iowa. We have a lot of people that we keep up here with here at church that are uh, living at home or living in care of others that uh, we ask you to pray for those each week, for those people that you may not know, you may never see, but watch us on television, watch us on the internet. We visit during the week, so pray for those that you may never meet, that you may never know. I want to make note that Nancy Devan is back in Mercy Hospital. She was there last week, out, and now back in, so pray for Nancy and her family. Jane Dibble is listed here as at Northwest Bentonville, but she has gone home now, so we're thankful that Jane is home, but she's still frere and frail and needs our prayers. Um, we have an extended prayer list that you can pick up each week. We have some typically on the desk in the uh, back of Becker Hall here. If there's not one there, there will be some in the narthex out in front of the sanctuary. So make note and look for those. The family of faith that we're going to be praying for this week, other than our church, we're praying for the Abundant Life Ministries here in Bella Vista. So remember them in your prayers and also make note on the back of this insert that our uh, mission of the month, this month of July, is the Northwest Arkansas Women's Shelter. So we ask that you give freely to them with your prayers, maybe with your presence, with your service, your witness, and certainly with your gifts to our church and also to always our mission of the month and those other, other places that uh, are in need around our, our area. Here in a moment, I'll have our pastoral prayer where I'll pray for all of our concerns, but also for our offering that we will take up. We'll have an offering that people will come and pass baskets. It's for our, you know, our regular attenders, our members. If you're a guest here, your presence with us is, is enough. There's a gift enough for our church. But we also ask at times if you have a dollar in your pocket, an extra dollar or whatever it may be, an extra quarter or an extra $1,000 bill, whatever it may be, if you find it in your pocket, know that there's so many people around this world that live on so little. Many in our area live on very little. Remember them with your gifts. The United Methodist Church has always been faithful in giving around the world, not just here, but all over the world in our shared giving. So make note of that, and please offer up your thanks to God for what you've been given and what you can offer to someone else. So let us pray. Gracious God, we gather here this morning to worship, to worship in freedom, to worship in the freedom that you've given us to use our minds, our bodies, to worship in freedom of the, with the talents that you have given us. And Lord, we are thankful that we worship this morning in a country that allows us to gather and do as we choose. And we pray that we choose well, that we choose a life and a worship that is pleasing to you, a life of joy and love, lifting you up, our God, in wonder and delight and joy and abundance that you have given us. God, we lift up those in the hospitals around us and the care facilities and those in their homes who are struggling. We lift up our church. We ask your blessings on all those around us and all those here, your comforting touch, your healing touch. Lord, we are thankful for the moisture in the air. At times we feel like we are being cooked this summer. But we are thankful because it reminds us that we are alive. It keeps us on our toes. It helps us to understand that this is your creation, that you take care of us, that the rain will come, that we will be cool, that the heat is a, a blessing, and that this life is given by you. Lord, we are just thankful to be here this morning, to hear your word spoken, to sing songs of praises, to lift up one another in love and kindness. Lord, help us to touch each other's lives, to make new friends, to have those conversations of holiness and love, to be your children, to know your grace, and to feel your presence this morning. All these things we pray in your most holy and precious Son's name. Amen.
take my life, a living sacrifice, knowing it's the least that I can do, make my life, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. I look upon my life and realize at last within myself there's nothing I can do. And yet here I stand to offer all I am and give myself completely, Lord, to you. Take my life, a living sacrifice, knowing it's the least that I can do. Make my life a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. I cannot be content until I reach that place, how little I have given up to you. Lord, break down my will, make my desires your own. I long to give my everything to you. Take my life, a living sacrifice. I know that it's the least that I can do. Make my life a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Holy and acceptable to you. Thank you, Amy. Today, we are focusing in the scripture in Psalm, the 95th Psalm, and then we'll also be reading in Romans in chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. So if you brought your Bibles, uh, you've got a little flipping to do today in the Bible. Um, I'm reading out of the NIV translation, and uh, I'm in the Psalm 95, I'm just going to read verses 1 through 7. Come. Let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. And the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come. Let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. And this is what he tells us. He says, we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. And then in Romans, we read this. This is the Apostle Paul's instructions on worship. And you can think about what Amy's just read as a living sacrifice. Therefore, I, I urge you, brothers... In view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. For this is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Let's pray. Lord, we hear your word this morning. We ask you to open up our hearts to understand, even in a greater way, what worship is, what worship means, and what worship does. And so we ask you, Lord, to bless our thoughts and our, our time that we spend together as we focus upon your word in Psalm 95 and in Romans 12. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. We began the sermon series, and here's our, our poster here of the four freedoms that we're talking about. And this is the, the 
painting that we are talking about today. It's called Freedom of Worship. And how this came to be is in 1941, when the, there was the threat and the forecast that possibly the United States of America we, would be entering into the world, the United States government formed three agencies that were responsible for war information and media. And those three agencies were the um, Office of Facts and Figures, there was the, the Division of Information of the Office of Emergency Management, and then there was the Office of Government Re Reports. And the Office of Facts and Figures was the w office that was responsible for producing in media and in printed form visual aspects of, of artwork to depict um, the war. And unless people's help and support and encouragement during this time of atrocity, absolutely in the world's history. And by mid-1942, the Office of War Information determined that despite the very diligent efforts of the Office of Facts and Figures through distributing pamphlets and, and posters and displays and all other you know, newsreels and different forms of media, that only a third of the general public of, of Americans were familiar with the four freedoms that President Franklin Delano Roosevelt ha had outlined in his State of the Union Address on January the 6th, 1941. And we talked about those last week, and we'll be talking about those for two more weeks, but those four freedoms that he listed are freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and then freedom from fear. So when they, they looked at this lack of understanding for the American populace, they, they tried to determine what they needed to do in order to promote fully the, the four freedom themes. And so they looked to Norman Rockwell. And they enlisted the help of Norman Rockwell to help depict these four freedoms to the American public. At this point in time in Rockwell's history, he had illustrated um, American life in such a, a valuable way that people were catching on and through the covers of Saturday Evening Post. And throughout the entirety of World War II, he produced 32 covers for Saturday Evening Post that really depicted um, the human side of the war effort that really got to where people were and where they were in this situation. And so in 1942, when he was painting these, these series of paintings, he, he had to think, what would cause people to remember these four freedoms? And so he enlist, enlisted the help of his Vermont neighbors. At that point in time, in his personal history, he was in Vermont. He had not moved to Massachusetts yet. And on the screens and on the front of your bulletin, is the painting that he produced. And this appeared on February the 27th, 1943, on a Saturday evening post cover. And it reveals freedom of worship. Now, you see his neighbors that he used. Those were people that he knew. The older lady in the, f in the front that has her hair pinned up, her name was Mrs. Harrington. The gentleman in the back that has the darker hair, his name is Jim Martin. In fact, Jim Martin is the man who appears in all four of these pictures. He's the lone dissident speaking. He's at the table. He's the father standing at the, at the bed of the children. It's the same man in all four of those pictures. And if you'll notice, those pictures are always, they've all been painted in very muted and, and dull colors. And it was really the intention of those paintings to remind America of what the war was being fought for. It was being fought for freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. So we have to think about freedom of want, of worship. What does that mean to us in 2012? Here we are, Christians in 2012, and today we do value the freedom of worship, but at the same time, we take it for granted. And we also know that there are many in our nation who, who abuse the freedom of worship by what they worship and, 
in who they worship and the way they choose to worship. But it is a freedom. Pastor Luli Giglio, he, he, I read an insightful definition that he, he places on worship, and he says this. Worship is our response to what we value. If we value God, and if we value God's mercy, we will be motivated to give God our very love. And so my question for you this morning is, so how do you know where and what you worship? How do you? You know what? You have to take a personal inventory. You have to take time to simply follow the trail of your time and your affection and your energy and your resources and your money and your loyalty. And then, at the end of that, you'll find a throne. And on that throne, you'll find whatever or whoever it is that is of highest value to you. On that throne will be what you worship. You know, worship means to ascribe highest value to, to, high, to present highest worth to, to honor something of great value. And when you and I worship God, we as Christians... We offer to God our lives. We offer to God our hearts. We offer to God our love. I mean, in worship, all we do is express our loyalty to God. In worship, all we do is express our love and our gratitude to God for who God is. Simply that. I mean, worship is a verb. Worship is an action that takes place for us in the heart of the believer. It is to bow down. It's to humble ourselves. It's to recognize God's sovereignty and to express our reverence to God in God's presence in whatever form that is. The psalmist understood that. In Psalm 95, verse 6 and 7, you and I read an expression of worship. He says, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Worship is action. And two of the many ingredients of worship are awe and joy. You know, when we worship God, there is absolutely a sense of awe, isn't there? When you read the words of the psalmist, when you read the words of Isaiah, you encounter words of a person or persons that have encountered God. And they are, their heart longs to experience God. Their heart longs to express their devotion to God. There is an awe in, in their expression. And when you and I, I encounter God in worship, there's a sense of joy that is absolutely a product of encountering God. There, it always has been. You cannot meet someone that has encountered God without from them sensing their joy, whether that is in Scripture or whether that is in a, a personal revelation of God's powerful presence in people's life. And that joy in our life, it, it overcomes the prejudices that we have or, or the fears or the selfish desires or, or the sadness or, or, or hatred or a hard heart. It's a way of penetrating and dispelling and dispersing and destroying those, those personal attributes that are not positive in our life. But see, the problem we create in worship is that at sometimes we cause awe and we cause joy to become in conflict to each other because we often think that you can't have the awe of worship unless you are in a quiet, still moment. And we often think you can't have the joy in worship unless you're very expressive and unless, you know, there's, there's all kinds of 
laughing and clapping and raising of hands. But the fact is you can have joy and you can have awe in worship, whether there's expressive worship or, or whether there's stillness. And you can have great joy and stillness and you, can, you will have great awe in expressive worship. The psalmist did. In Psalm 95, verse 1 and 2, he says, Come, let us sing for the joy of the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Our worship of God is absolutely an expression of our joy. It's an expression of our awe of the mercy that God shows to us time and time and time again, knowing that he never relents from showing his mercy to us in our, li- our lives, never. Historical, the historical theologian John Calvin, he said that we will never worship with a sincere heart and we will never serve a God with unbridled joy until we properly understand how much we are indebted to God's mercy. God has demonstrated so much mercy to us, he says, that we cannot help but respond fully by surrendering our lives to him. As the Apostle Paul said, as a holy and living sacrifice. I mean, Isaac Watts got this. You know, he understood this fully and And when he penned the the famous hymn that has stood the test of time that we sing and that we value, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, it says in, in in the song, one of the lines, it says, Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. I mean, everyone's take on on worship is different until we truly discover what worship is. Because I can tell you what worship is not. Worship is not a spectator sport. Worship is not an event. Worship is not a performance. Worship is not music. Worship is a heartfelt response to a triune God who loves us. I mean, worship is that which values God above everyone and everything else in our life. It is declaring worth and value to God. That's what worship is. And so, the question for us is not, "Hmm, did I like the music today or not? Or, that sermon was tragic. Or, I didn't get anything out of that service. That's not the question. The real question is, Is my worship pleasing to God? We individually have to ask ourselves that question. Because our purpose is to honor God. It's to please God, not to please ourselves. Worship for us as Christian believers, really it's a lifestyle. It's not an hour on Sunday. It's not an occasional time when we feel like. Romans 12 helps us to understand that, verses 1 and 2. And we read these words. In view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, we're so accustomed to equating worship with what happens in this room on Sunday morning. But we are not designed by God for one hour worship times out of seven days. We are designed through our divine relationship with God to be in worship of him seven days a week, 24 hours a day. That's what our worship relationship is to be. It's a worship relationship with a God who loves us. And who's devoted to us. And because of that, we worship him. I mean, worship is to fill in your heart. And it's to express in your life a sense of the awe 
in the joy of the overpowering love of the ancient mystery, of the majesty, of the creator, of our redeemer, of our savior, of our Lord. I mean, worship for us, it's not a choice. It's a way of life. Worship for us, it's not simply getting. Worship is giving. Worship, we worship a God simply because of who God is. When I was in college and I was taking my religion classes that Dr. John Farthing taught, remember Dr. Farthing asking us in, a, in one of the classes a, a pretty simple question that had a, a pretty profound answer to it. And he said, if God unpaved all the streets of gold in heaven, would you still worship him? And if he took buckets of water and poured out all the fires of hell, would you still worship him? Would you worship God simply for who God is? See, in our life, worship of God brings freedom in life. Absolutely. It brings freedom. And so when you and I cheat our own personal selves of our own encounters with God in worship, the one we're really harming is us. Because God is a God who is so devoted to us, who loves us so dearly, who is always constant, available, and present. And he is worthy of every ounce of worship that we give to him. And that is one of the freedoms that we have, not simply as Americans, but as Christians. Lord, we thank you today for all that you are. For you do so much and you have done so much in our lives. But help us, Lord, to understand that our, our worship of you is because of who you are. And may we discover freedom. May we absolutely discover freedom in our worship. It's in the holy, saving name of your Son, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And together we say, amen. This morning, as we close in, in song, we'll close with a song. I think in the bulletin it says hunger. Um, you're invited to become a part of this church family if you feel so led. You're invited to come uh, by our own profession of faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord of your life, or transfer of your membership of another church family to this church family. If you'd like to um, be prayed with for anything in your life, Pastor Lee and myself, we're here, and we'd love to pray with you as well. But we invite you to stand, and we invite you to worship.
your all is ours is the healing flow. And so ask yourself this question daily this week. Is Jesus in your heart and is he the one you're living for? And worship him. Whatever way that you can in, in that moment that you encounter the power of his presence because he is present with you. He's our God who's faithful. He's faithful in our past. He's faithful in our present. And he's faithful for our future. And we're honored by that, that he is so faithful in our life. God is good. And all the time. Don't just come to church, but go out and be the church. God bless you. Have a most wonderful week.